I guess I, I guess it started when I was three. Um, they took me over to UVA because they found a bone tumor uh, in my arm, and they did chemotherapy and radiation there, and I had several different other treatments. Um, one thing they were concerned about is the chemotherapy that they gave me, adriamycin, causes uh, congestive heart failure, or can cause congestive heart failure. And so during the midst of my chemotherapy, I actually developed congestive heart failure and then continued going over there for those reasons. And um, then when I was 12, I got, um, um, <laughs> I don't do well on the spot. <laughs> That's okay. So we're going to add it all to say just you know, when you were 12. When I was 12, I got um, a disease, or gosh, I got a vi virus in my heart, uh, or a, gosh, I got a virus that went to my heart and it created more problems and they ended up deciding that it would be best if I went on to the transplant list and got a new heart. And so when, well, I guess that was when I was 11. When I was 12, I got the transplant. And then after a couple years, they follow you very, very closely. And then after that, I started doing better um, and was continued to be followed and monitored um, and went to, went to college and things like that. And then I ended up when I was 23, 23, I developed a brain tumor in which my family and I all decided that UVA was the best place to be treated for that. And so I came back up and was treated for brain tumor. Um, and then several years, five years later, um, after that was all cleared and everything, they decided, or I got kind of worn down and sick and um, it was harder to do daily activities and things. And so they decided to give me another heart transplant. And so I had that when I was 28 at UVA. Um, and then they're, they've been continuing to follow me since then. And I will be seven years out, no, six years out in two days. It's been a long journey. It has been a long journey. <laughs> I was three when they discovered it. And you had your uh, and you can you had your con your congestive heart failure. How old were you when when you was from the chemo? How old were you when that happened? When I well, they did the they found the chemotherapy or they found the tumor, um, and they started chemotherapy and radiation, mm -hmm. um, and for about I I don't know the exact time, it was about a year or so, um, and I actually I never got my last chemotherapy treatment because the that's when the heart started acting up and needed to um, address that and they stopped the chemotherapy so it didn't cause worse damage to the heart. Adolescent heart transplant at UVA Children's Hospital. I was the first adolescent heart transplant done at UVA Hospital. Um, Did you say Children's Hospital? I said UVA Hospital. It was it the Children's Hospital then? There really wasn't a Children's Hospital. Oh, there wasn't. Okay. I was the first UVA, I was the first pediatric heart transplant done at UVA Children's Hospital. Young girl. Yeah, it, it was scary. Um, I remember thinking, well, you care and you love with your heart, so when they take my heart out and put another one in, am I gonna care and love for other people and forget about, I mean, little questions like that, that logically you know the answer to, but kind of emotionally you have this fear, curiosity. So I remember feelings like that. Um, and certainly it was scary, um, but at the same time, you don't have a choice. So you just, do it and uh, hope that the, no, I won't say that. <laughs> hope the drugs are good. <laughs> um, you hope that you don't wake up in the middle of surgery and um, 
I wanted, one of the main things I was focused on is I wanted to get my heart in a jar so I could use it for um, science projects later. They wouldn't let me do that though, we found out later. <laughs> but. Can't imagine why. <laughs> I don't know, it was my heart. I, I, I'm with you. I, think you. I think you have a very real right to that. It's, uh, the, um, you know, I, I know that, that one of the relationships that you built while you were in the children's hospital was uh, I think a special one with your doctor, Nancy McDaniel. Um, can you speak a little bit about your relationship with Nancy and, and any other doctors, nurses who you became close with during your time there? Um. Just trying to think what all. I mean, I know that's terrible to say, but I was, I was younger. Um, you know, I did get close to Nancy McDaniel, and um, she was a great doctor. She, one of the biggest things that I'm, I focus on when I'm around the medical field or medical people is their bedside manners. Um, and she had very, very good bedside manners. Um, you know, I. I don't remember anything specific. Don't put that in there. <laughs> well, it doesn't have to be her either. It can be anyone. Um, you know, she's in the video. But. Yeah, yeah. I think, well, the one that is. Who stands out? Yeah. Well, Dr. Bergen stands out to me. I don't, I don't know. I mean, I don't know how much he still does adolescent or if he's more just adult, but he's my doctor still to this day. And that's. One of the reasons my husband and I moved back up here um, was to, we knew that I had another heart transplant coming. Um, and so we decided that being back up here um, with UVA and, uh, you know, was the best place to be. And we felt the most comfortable being back here. Um, and UVA Children's Hospital right in your backyard. See both you and your kids. Well, it's it's very reassuring. Um, my daughter, when she was born, she had um, a um, VSD or is that right? No, P PDA, patent ductus arteriosus. Um, so yeah. she had, a, yeah. <laughs> when my daughter was born, or when we received our daughter, she's they're both of my children are adopted. Um, she had a patent ductus arteriosus, and. Um, she, when I found out who her cardiologist was, it was Dr. Carpenter, Martha Carpenter at UVA, um, who was one of the doctors that saved my life. Um, there was a situation in which I was very, very sick. And she, from what I understand, she was at a um, conference and was learning about ACE inhibitors being used for the cardiac patients and things like that. Um, and so she called up and said, try this medication, and it turned things around overnight because apparently I was pretty sick at the time. Um, so, but my daughter, I found out that that was her doctor, and so we went over there and um, she saw Katie, and um, now everything's fine. It closed up on its own, but just that comfort to be able to go over there and know that it's experienced doctors, experienced nurses, um, they've been around it, they know, um, they know complications and uh, know ways to work around those complications is, wasn't very important to us. Well, it feels great to be able to have two healthy, happy kids. Um, I was told when I was 16 that I probably wouldn't be able to have children and so I said well we need to f figure out how to change that um, so my husband and I decided to adopt um, we adopted through social services foster program um, and we little up, some ups and downs in trying to get everything legalized but my daughter we got at five months old and my son is her full biological brother and we got him straight from the hospital um, and they are both happy and healthy and um, active seven and eight year olds that, you know, we come home, we do homework and we do try to do sports and 
boxing and jujitsu and gymnastics and whatever they're into at the time. And you know, I love it. It's it's tiring. It's a, it's a it's a mom's job. It's very exhausting. And um, but at the same time, it's wonderful. I mean, to have to have my kids that I can teach and I can play with and I can um, work with them. It's it's a great feeling. Well, I know that answer exactly. Um, when I was 11 years old, I was getting my first um, ca um, cardiac catheterization. And I remember laying on the table and all the nurses, they were talking about, oh, you'll experience this and you'll experience this and it'll, it'll be okay and it's no big deal, you're fine. And so I said, well, have you ever had this done? because they knew everything, what I was going to experience. And they were like, well, no. I said, okay, then be quiet, because until you know what it feels like to lay on this table, I don't want to hear it. <laughs> um, so at that point, I really, I knew exactly what I wanted to do. Um, I wanted to be in the medical field, and I really liked the idea of being a nurse, because um, the nurses are, you know, they're bedside. They're the ones that you see all the time and they're the ones that um, doctors certainly do their care and everything but they're the one that's more close to the patients um, and can comfort the patients and on a regular basis um, and so I knew that's what I wanted to do um, and I actually and what I really wanted to do was be in the procedural labs uh, where I could tell that person well yeah I've had quite a few of these <laughs> Um, and so I ended up doing that. I ended up working for UVA uh, in the electrophysiology lab, which is dealing with the heart arrhythmias and um, putting pacemakers and defibrillators in and doing ablations on the heart and things like that. Um, and so that's, I, I really enjoy doing that. And, um, you know, I, I had lots of patients say, well, you don't understand what it's like. and you know, it's, it's nice to be able to say, yeah, I, I do. I know where you're coming from. You know, yes, I know your back hurts. And um, they, um, and let's see what we can do to make it better. Um, and then I left there, I left UVA to raise a family. Um, my kids were young. And also I had that heart transplant coming up that I was going to, uh, have and um, so I stayed at home for several years with my kids until they got to be uh, my son went to kindergarten and then when he went to kindergarten uh, I decided that it would be great to work with kids um, with, a, with a great schedule and I can be more on a schedule with my kids so I could be home when they get home um, and help them do what they needed to do and so they wouldn't be in a, you know, after school care program or something so I could enjoy that time with them still. And so school nursing was a great opportunity to be able to do that. Um, so I've been working at Climore Elementary for two years uh, and we have from preschool all the way up to fifth grade. Um, and so I give out a lot of ice packs, a lot of band-aids, things like that. So. It's, uh, um, it's okay if there's not. There. <laughs> I don't think, I mean, there's not like one particular nurse. Um, there, there are a lot of nurses that I remember very fondly and there are a lot of nurses I'm a terrible patient. Um, and that, no, I'm not gonna say that. <laughs> <laughs> Ha <laughs>